Good afternoon and thank you for joining us in the next of our interviews with parliamentary candidates across both of Warrington's constituencies. Today we're joined by Wendy Maisie, who's standing for the Conservatives in Warrington North. Wendy, thank you for joining us. Just to start, I mean, how is the campaign going so far? Okay, the campaign is going really, really well. And I can actually see a real mood for change in the Warrington uh, North area. Gone are the days where the Conservative voters have said, you know what, it really isn't worth going out there and voting. It's, it, it's a Labour seat, it really isn't worth it. Um, and I think there's a sense out there, particularly over um, Brexit and over a candidate being parachuted in, that there seems to be a, a mood within the, cons within the Labour voters that they're being taken for granted. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, that, that, that's never really the way to go uh, forward. I was democratically voted in by the Warrington North Conservative members. Uh, which goes a long way to actually having support for uh, the candidate going forward. And since the seat was created in 1983, sorry, it's won by Labour every single time and there's a 9,500 majority for Labour in the constituency. Do you truly believe you can overturn that and win the seat? Okay, well I think my predecessor Val Allen in 2017, she did a fantastic job in halving um, the majority that Labour had. But you know, this is going to be the most unpredictable election within my lifetime for sure. And how safe is a safe seat? So much has changed again from 2017. Um, and also the way the Labour Party um, has changed as well, has influenced how people vote here. I think there's quite a lot of concern out there, um, obviously, about Corbyn's, um, Jeremy Corbyn's relent relentless Marxist agenda, which will ruin the country. I'm offering an alternative. I'm a business leader in Warrington. I've been bringing prosperity and employment to Warrington for over 23 years. I'm ingrained within the community through some of the charities and everything else. And people really do want to know who their candidate is and be able to feel um, connected with that candidate. So I'm hoping that the personal touch will also um, place my advantage as well. It's widely been labelled as the Brexit election, of course. It must have come as a bit of a blow that the Brexit party is standing in Warrington North too. Is there a fear that they may cut into the Tory vote? Well, it was totally expected. Um, we've been told that they're not standing in the safe Conservative seats. Um, but who knows? I've managed personally and, and my campaign team to uh, dissuade people on the doorsteps from uh, actually voting for the Brexit party. Because obviously, if you want to see Brexit done on the 31st of January, and you want to see the country move on to some of the fantastic initiatives that we have going forward, we do need to get Brexit done. Now, by splitting the vote, we're, we're, we're obviously in a situation where something that some of the Brexit party have fought for for years, formerly UKIP, they're literally, you know, putting themselves in a situation where Brexit won't happen if the Conservatives do not get a majority government. And in seats like Warrington North, it's just really imperative that people understand that if they want Brexit, if they don't vote for me and the Conservative Party this time around, if they vote for the Brexit Party, they will end up with Jeremy Corbyn potentially coming into Downing Street through the back door. But I do feel that actually some of the kind of uh, grassroots Labour people who I speak to, um, I think Labour have got a lot to lose as well um, from, from that Brexit vote. And obviously your business is based in Warrington, but much has been said about you actually living outside of the town. What do you make of the political attack from Labour about that issue? I think attack is exactly the right word. It was um, an anonymous quote from um, a, a, a Labour person within the, the, the Labour Party. And to be perfectly honest, it completely backfired on them. I've always been very, very clear that I've lived in and around the Warrington area for over 30 years. I've lived in Croft, I lived on Kenyon Lane, and a few years ago we made a decision to move to the end of Kenyon Lane, assuming we were still in Warrington. Well, actually, it's, it's not. Uh, it's Lowton. Um, 
and some of some of the backlash has been awful uh, from some from some of the Labour Party and the councillors with hashtag Wigan Wendy, all very very personal things. And actually, it's not true because my constituency is Lowton. My back garden is still the Warrington boundary, and the front of my house is uh, the Lowton uh, Lee constituency. But it's all about what you bring to the area. I do consider myself very very local. I create employment in the town. Uh, as I say, my daughters were all born at Warrington Hospital, so no, they definitely shot themselves in the foot with that one, especially when ten days later uh, Islington candidate was uh, parachuted in from uh, the London area. And you, if you did the almost unthinkable on December the 12th and caused one of the biggest shocks of the night to become MP, I mean further down the line what is what are your political ambitions? My political ambitions really is to do exactly what I'm doing for Warrington and for the North West area week in, week out. Now we're in Perder at the moment so th th there's a lot of departments that I really cannot name during this interview. But you know, I campaign all of the time and I lobby uh, and I, I bring not just employment but um, obviously um, in Warrington, I do an awful lot of um, campaigning, shall we say, unofficially um, for, for exporting. I mentor companies who have never exported before, and I want to carry on just bringing back wealth to the Warrington area, but continuing as well with some of the charities that I work very, very closely with, and just championing what a fantastic place Warrington is. And if you are sent to Westminster, would you continue working or would your full-time uh, focus beyond become an MP? Definitely couldn't uh, continue to work. I actually finished here in the uh, offices where we're having this interview um, just over three weeks ago actually, a week or so after I was selected as the candidate. Now I am a business owner so obviously I still have certain responsibilities with regard to board meetings once a quarter or once a month or whatever but it's, it is impossible to try and do my day job. So what I've been doing over the last few months when I knew I was going to run for um, for the seat is to carve up my responsibilities that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to other managers here um, just to give me that extra free time to actually focus on the election. And coming back to the point of Brexit, I know you along with Tory candidates across the country have backed Prime Minister Boris Johnson's deal. I mean, number one, how did you vote in the EU referendum in 2016? And what are your general views on Brexit? Do you have any concerns, particularly economic concerns? I voted leave. I've always been very, very clear about that. Um, the only concern I have about Brexit is the ongoing delays. As a business owner, we've had the goalposts moved so many times, we've prepared so many times. So really, they are the only concerns I have. The business that I run, we export over 92% of our products abroad. Some of them go to the European Union, the majority of them go outside the European Union. And I think that once we leave the European Union, we'll still have a fantastic relationship with our um, partners and countries within the European Union. Um, but I'm absolutely confident that we will be able to continue, not just to thrive as a nation, um, but for, for sure when we strike some of the trade deals that we're going to, um, that we will be uh, open to the rest of the world without the shackles. And away from the national issue of Brexit, taking it more locally to Peel Hall, mm -hmm. what is your stance on Peel Hall? Would you like to see that protected from any development? Obviously, it's such an emotive and sensitive issue, which residents have been campaigning on for years and years now. But what is your stance on Peel Hall? My stance on Peel Hall is exactly the same as my stance on uh, the majority of the green belt. Now I appreciate it isn't a green it isn't green belt, obviously, but I've been very very clear. And if anybody goes to, to to my website or has a look at what my plan is, we have so much brownfield that we can use in the Warrington area. We should not be considering um, building houses on green belt. It's an absolute myth that the council are being forced by the government. Well the now dissolved government to actually build on the green belt. That isn't the case. I would also like to see some of the two and a half thousand vacant and empty properties in the Warrington area. They're not all in Warrington North, but in the Warrington area, 
being utilised. Now, some of those are in private ownership. Some of those are managed by the Warrington Borough Council. Um, but some of them are left empty for some time. Um, and these houses tend to be in areas where we already have uh, transport, we have GPs, we have school. Building on the green belt just doesn't make sense to me where we don't have any of these services in place whatsoever. And do you think local issues such as, I mean, Peel Hall and traffic still have a huge role to play in the election? Or do you think it's purely going to be about Brexit when it comes to voting day on December the 12th? You've certainly got to know all of the local issues um, and obviously with regard to Brexit it seems to be very important to get it done so we can move on to other things. Now I'm not a one trick pony, I know the majority of the issues in the area having lived here as I say for 30 years. That is not something you can pick up in four weeks before, while, while there's a general election going on. So I'm very familiar, you talked about Peel Hall which is really important but there's HS2, there's Parkside, there's the 200 houses that are the, the building on the green belt um, in, in culture. These things all are very, very important to people in the area for sure. And probably an impossible task, but what do you do to try and take your mind off politics and Brexit in your free time? Well, I do have three daughters, so um, I'd say probably one of the, the, the best things that I really enjoy doing, um, I'm not one to dash around the shops or anything else, if I get a bit of free time, um, I enjoy taking my daughters on a spa day just out of the area, um, you know, some fantastic hotels literally just on our doorsteps here, and it's the only time you kind of just get a chance to sit and chat with them really and find out what they're up to and what they're thinking about my um, changing and evolving uh, career in politics rather than chip and pin test tools. So they're intrigued too. Thanks for your time today, Wendy. Thank you.